What's up everybody? My name is Russ with RWResearch.com. So today I'm going to be doing a little review probably thing, my Bob. I don't know exactly what you want to call it, but I decided to try some different new type of filament that I've never used before. And uh, I'm going to just do a little review on it because I think it's going to be pretty interesting and hopefully helpful. Um, so the filament I'm actually going to be using is called Saint Smart Flexible TPU and it's a flexible type of filament. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. If that's not in focus, I'll focus it later. So basically, um, the only type of filaments that I've ever printed with is ABS and nylon. Um, I have a spool here of PLA and I've never even printed with it. I was going to try it, but I decided to uh, do this plastic because I want something a little more UV resistant. And flexibility is actually good for the current project that I want to do. So this is my filament extruder, and I'm currently heating up uh, heating up the filament extruder. This is my excuse me 3D printer uh, that I constructed a while back. Made a video on this. If you haven't seen it, you can watch it. Um, this is a Delta style printer, and normally on these Delta style printers, you have a Bowden tube or a Bowden tube, however you want to say it, which is this little white tube in here. And uh, I'm actually hanging my extruder motor above the hot end, and so it's a little bit more free. And this gets rid of all the weight on the, uh, on the end effector here. And they say, from my little bit of research, that it's difficult to get this filament work to work with a Bowden ex uh, extruder. However, I'm only uh, six inches of Bowden tube, and... Uh, I don't know. We'll see how this works. I know I think I'm going to have to go ahead and fix my uh, my uh, extruder or yeah, my extruder motor where the tube inside there is going to have to be fixed so that the filament doesn't bow it out. So we'll see how that goes. All right. So the filament I already opened it, but it does come in a vacuum package seal. It was vacuumed, but I already cut it. Incandescent, which is good, and here's the actual spool of filament. Now, um, this stuff is pretty squirrely already. You can see how how wrapped up it is, and there's a, the logo and what I'm using. So this stuff's pretty interesting. I cut off a little piece just to play with it, and uh, it is really uh, really interesting stuff because it's not really all that straight. It's got a lot of kinks and nicks and stuff in it, and that's just from being on the spool. And, and that's going to be really bad whenever you're trying to feed it through here. If there's any slop or play where it can bulge out, it's going to. I've had problems with my ABS uh, undersized and bulging out the side and not working, so I think I'm going to have to do a little manipulation here. But um, Let's cut off a small piece. Actually, I'm just going to feed it through here so it doesn't fall off. Really quickly, this is a really nice plastic spool and uh, it looks like I might be able to get it apart and make it bigger so I can use it on my filament extruder because I use these wide rolls that you see here um, on my homemade filament extruder. Now the interesting thing is this thing is actually loose on here and uh, that's, look at that, That's kind of bad, so I'm going to have to make sure I squeeze this in there so the whole roll stays tight because I don't want it to slip and fly off. So this stuff is, uh, is pretty flexible. Uh, I did try to actually break it. Let's try it again. Ah, okay, so it can be broken, but man, that thing, that really stretches. Good stuff. It's not near as uh, flexible as like uh, the Ninja Flex. From what, I'm, from what I'm reading, which I believe this isn't very flexible at all considering uh, what it is, but it is really rubbery. It's more like a rubber. When I print with it, I'll tell you exactly how I think, but it's been told that it's sort of like a rubber ducky type of rubber. So We'll see. I'll give you guys an update as I progress, but right now I'm going um, to insert a little tube in there inside my extruder. I'll see if I can show you exactly what I'm going to be doing. 
Okay, so just trying it by hand, by manipulating this manually, it is definitely going to be a lot of work to get this to work right, I think. So, I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, uh, external portion of this off and actually see if we can insert a tube down in there. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Okay, let's see if we can see this. So, it's going to be hard to see, but you see there's a, a roller on the right that has the grooves in it and a bearing on the left. And there's a little bitty air gap space down in there. Let me actually see if I can turn this light on. And uh, it didn't really help, did it? So down in there, there's a little bit of space, and I need to fill that in all the way up to where it's really nice and pinched in between there. I'll draw it on a piece of paper so you can see what I'm saying. Okay, so here we are. We've got our roller and we've got our bearing. And the plastic kind of comes up and kind of does this. Alright, so and then there's a hole through here. So what we need to do is actually put an insert, one of those um, Teflon tubes, right? They're four inch, uh, four millimeter outside diameter, two millimeter inside diameter, and insert it right in here. But we want it to come up and actually almost kiss these two components. All right, so when the filament comes through here, it has to go right into this tube. Because right now, it gets right in this area right here, and it just bunches out the side like this. It just, uh, and, yeah, it, it literally, it's really bad. So that's what we're going to try to fix. All right, so now you can, should, if I can get my camera in here, should be able to see what I'm talking about down here. So you can see the hole. You can see where it's at, and it's hard to tell, but look how far away it is from that gear. Alright, so we're going to try to fix that by adding a little tube in there. Alright, it just so happens that that hole down in there is exactly the right diameter to fit this. So I stuck it in there, got an eyeball measurement, and basically cut it to look like this. One side's the wheel side, the other side's the bearing side, that's why they're off a little bit. So we'll insert that and we'll see what it looks like. Oh, I got the tube inserted. And uh, we'll put the bearing in and see how close it comes to the bearing, but it looks okay. Could cut it a little better, but we'll see how the bearing, it may be, it may be pretty close. It just has to be pushed down a fraction more. Alright, well there we are. And uh, there it is. That looks really good. That's exactly what I needed. So hopefully it doesn't get caught in that. It looks like the bearing will keep it from coming up too far, but uh, it may get sucked back up in retraction. So I may need to add a dab of glue down in there somehow, but I don't know if it's going to stick to that Teflon. So let's insert the filament, see what it looks like. All right, guys, so I forced it in there the best I could without the hot end being hot and tried to compress it in there. And uh, the only thing it did is it kind of tweaked the filament a little. Here you can see it's kind of got a ding little twist in it and it didn't didn't ruin the uh, filament as far as like digging into it and getting caught in there it's really uh, not probably ever gonna do that it's pretty tough stuff it's just gonna either cut in half or shred off or something crazy so that looks like exactly what you want just so there's a reference for you so you know exactly what I'm talking about that's what I want and I couldn't do the 3d print that close it just didn't seem to work so inserting a tube like this, should have done this a long time ago for other problems that I had, but hopefully that fixes it. So we'll, we'll give it a little hot test run and see what happens. Okay, now I'm having the opposite problem on the top. So I've just done this. We'll see if this helps. This is basically just to guide that guy down in there so it doesn't get off too far. We'll see if it actually helps. I think it will. Okay, well that top tube seemed to help dramatically. So let's do some test prints. See what happens. All right, so as we watch this time lapse, a quick uh, quick overview here. This, this particular video, I was going to add in some other um, testing of this type of filament. However, this video is just kind of a technical overview of how I 
was able to achieve running this filament. Um, I've got a whole nother slew of video that I should be posting sometime in the near future and uh, it's a it's an overview of what what I've done testing the filament and its strength and different temperatures yada 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 however uh, in this particular video like I said I wanted to show you the technical things that I needed to do to achieve um, the goal of not getting it bouted out as I mentioned earlier <laughs> um, yes that's a word I have my own dictionary so you can just thank me for that right now Go ahead, Webster. Add it to the dictionary. 2016. Okay, so just so you guys know, if you do have a really long Bowden tube, uh, like if you have your extruder mounted on the side and there's more than, you know, the six inches that I have here, uh, if you've got a long tube that might be a couple of feet, uh, I have a feeling that it's this type of filament's not going to work well. You can see those strings on this print. I think most of those strings are probably caused actually by the retraction not being as great as it should be. Um, so those are things that you can work out, but honestly, I don't think if you have a long Bowden tube, it's going to work. That's just from my viewpoint of how the stuff slides through there. You could possibly get it to run, but I don't know. You'd, you'd have to try that for yourself, but for me, the short tube, that uh, seemed to do pretty good, actually. Oh. Well. That's not good. I mean, you know, son of a nutcracker.